Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, uh, I'm going to be demoing a, a little bit of software that I wrote using a kind of <laughs> clever approach to AWS, uh, which allows me to have a cron tab that keeps state and is done entirely for free um, without, you know, without spending money on databases or other stuff like that. Um, so let me show you what I did. Okay, so for today, we're going to be talking about this, this shiny Pokemon scraper. This is kind of my cron example that I wanted to, uh, that I wanted to implement. And what this thing does, just to give you a, a TLDR here, is uh, there's these events, these in-game events in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and sometimes they have guaranteed what are called shiny Pokemon. Shiny Pokemon are basically normal Pokemon, except they have a different color. So you can see this Pokemon here versus this Pokemon here, this one is shiny. And occasionally these events have guaranteed shiny Pokemon. So I wanted to basically scrape these pages periodically and email myself whenever a new one got created. Uh, but I didn't want it to email me continuously if it, you know, if the latest one was, was shiny. Like uh, this one came out a few days ago and if it would have emailed me every time the cron fired, that would not be great. So I needed some sort of state in my model. Um, and so what I decided, or what I, what I figured out <laughs> was I can utilize a few AWS services that are provided entirely for free to implement this for me. Um, and the first service that we're going to be using in here is CloudWatch Events. Um, I'm actually going to very briefly go over the Terraform code for this. Um, it matches up pretty one-to-one -one with how you would set this up in the console. Uh, I find that Terraform is much easier to read than me clicking around the AWS uh, console, especially because clicking around the AWS console is not gonna it's not gonna be that way forever um, but you can use cloudwatch events to set up a cron trigger basically allow you to periodically run some software and uh, in this case i'm using that cron trigger to run a lambda now lambda on aws has i think it's a million free executions per month uh, so as long as you're not running something a million times you're pretty much fine to use lambda as, as essentially a, a free service to run stuff whatever you whatever compute you need um but lambdas are pretty limited and we'll talk about some of those limitations in a bit um, but in my case i'm using this lambda to do that scraping so it's loading that page um, deciding whether it's it's shiny or not and then you know sending that off to an email service and in this case i'm using ses uh, i think it's simple email service i don't know it's it's amazon's emailing thing um, but the the real like the the real breakthrough thing here is I'm using this lambda to store state. So not only is it code, but it also has data stored in the lambda itself, and the lambda updates itself as a side effect of running. And so this this is how I can kind of abuse a stateful lambda or a stateful cron without you know paying for a database because you know usually usually I would have to set up you know a Dynamo or whatever and. You know, set up a table and do all this other stuff when I really just need to keep track of like what's the last thing I viewed so I don't you know spam myself when it changes or when it doesn't change um, so uh, without without further ado let's take a look at the code here the code is pretty straightforward I'll skip over a lot of the individual bits that are uh, <laughs> I guess more specific to the actual thing that I'm solving here um, and talk just specifically about the um, the actual clever bits here. So we start with this Lambda handler. This is kind of the entry point that uh, ADRS is going to call us at. And uh, I start by trying to open this state.txt file. This is where I'm going to store the stateful bit of my of my execution. So any state that I need will go in this file. You could use JSON or even like SQLite or what, whatever you need to store your data here. Um, I was I got away with just using a plain flat text file that just had a URL in it because uh, that was the only state was the uh, previous URL, but you could put more stuff in here if you wanted. So I start by loading that. Um, then I do the actual side effect of what I'm trying to look for. So in this case, I'm opening a particular URL. I'm finding a different page inside that first URL that I load. Um, and then down here, I compare if the previous URL, the one that we loaded out of our state up here, is the same as the page that we just loaded. Uh, this means that I don't need to do anything. We've already you know, we've already parsed this page. We already know it either is or isn't, and we've already sent an email because of it. Um, but if the page changes, for instance, a new event comes out, then I want to load that page and see if it has, you know, 
see if it has new stuff in the output. In this case, you know, this is how I send an email here. Um, basically, I detect this particular bit of HTML and then I send an email. Um, and then finally, we need to write out that new state. Now note that Lambda has a read-only file system. This is one of the limitations that I was talking about before. Um, this code here is mostly for me to debug locally. This doesn't actually run in Lambda. In fact, this line always raises an error in Lambda because the working directory is read-only. Um, but what we can do is we can take this same state file, write out a new zip file, um, and we can actually write this file in memory so that we don't we avoid writing to that read-only file system. I think there are actually places you can write in Lambda. Like I think you can write to the temporary directory, um, but we can just avoid writing to the disk at all and write it to directly in memory. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm using a bytes IO. I'm using the zip file module in Python to make a zip. And then finally I call Lambda client .update function code. So what this is doing is it's replacing the running function code. So the next time this gets run, it will have whatever state.txt that I have written inside of it. So you can see that I have um, you know, made sure to write it into here. Now, one little weird thing that I ran into while working with this is Lambda uses a, a very strange zip module that defaults everything to being unreadable. So if you don't set permission bits on particular files, you just won't be able to access them. Um, so that's what this little external adder 644 left shifted 16 does. Um, this is the um, you know, the Unix read write mode. So this is um, read write for the user and then read for the uh, group and other. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of that's kind of the TLDR about how this thing executes. Uh, now I want to show you the Terraform that brings this all together. Uh, so if we go into Terraform, uh, I basically have three files here. The first is the AWS provider. This just says, hey, Terraform, use AWS. Um, I did mine in US East 1. You can pick whatever region you want. Um, this is the role. We'll actually look at the role first because this is what says the, per or, you know, gives the permissions to the Lambda to do whatever it needs to do. Uh, so in this case, I say, you know, run this from a Lambda, uh, allow it to create logs so that the Lambda can write output and I can debug it. Um, and the important bit is I'm allowed to update function code on itself. So this is kind of like a circular reference to itself. Um, but it allows the Lambda to update itself in place and kind of replace out the state with new state as a file. Oh, and then I also allow it to send emails. So that's this last bit. Uh, and then finally, I set up the Lambda. The Lambda has some variables for how the email works. You don't really care about that. Um, we have this CloudWatch event rule, which has this special cron. And, you know, it hooks up that, that cron to the Lambda. Um, so basically, I'm using CloudWatch events to trigger a Lambda periodically, and then the Lambda updates itself with the state that it has. Um, and this is, I mean, I'm really happy with the, the result here. Um, I, can actually, I can actually show you this, uh, this already works. Um, so here is an example, you know, output where it ran and said, hey, here's a new shiny raid. And I was able to you know, run this and uh, get the shiny Pokemon from it. But anyway, that's that. Hopefully, hopefully you found this interesting. Um, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.